First time in woodcraft, and like a kid at Mr. Duncan's Toy Chest. Let's go see what they got. This is a really nice store. One of the finer toy dealerships I've ever visited in my life. For me to get to a woodcraft is no easy task. I have one nowhere near me. As a matter of fact, the closest one is in Dallas, Texas, and we had to fly to get to this one. A good friend of mine, Jeff Allred with Allred Woodworks, actually set this up in advance so that they knew we were coming and they agreed to do it, and we appreciate it because we are not sponsored by Woodcraft in any way. I was just a fan and wanted to tour the store. This is the Hearst, Texas location Woodcraft. When you walk in, the first thing you see on the left are power tools, table saws, band saws, drill presses, router tables, lathes, you name it, pretty much a power tool, it's going to be there. You also get to manipulate the controls and see if that's something you're going to be able to live with when you purchase the tool. While I was filming this video, I ran into Steve, who is a woodworking instructor there at Woodcraft. I didn't know Woodcraft had classes available. So before we finish the tour, let's hear what he had to say. We're again at Woodcraft, this is Steve, and Steve teaches here in a classroom at Woodcraft, and I believe that's kind of what sets Woodcraft apart from a lot of your other woodworking stores, right? It, it does, yes. Most of the Woodcraft stores in the United States do have classes, uh, but they're all different based on uh, what the guys that currently work there have expertise in. So that's how they're developed. So that's what we, we have, uh, myself, I have two different, uh, four different classes, two cabinet making classes, a box class and a woodworking 101 class for beginners. So that's what I do here. Today we're doing a basic box class. So they sign up for the class, they pay for it, and then you Yes, Is it sir, a one-day class, two-day class? How but some of them are one day, some of them are, the, both cabinet making classes are two days, and usually conducted on a weekend. Okay. This one here, the basic box class is a one-dayer, um, so that's, uh, it works out really well. And the basic box class, what kind of joinery are y'all doing? We do, well, this is the box we make in class. Oh, that's pretty. We have the keyed miters mm -hmm. here, and it's a lift-off lid kind of a box with a veneered top. And ours, um, we've been working with Ambrosia Maple. That's what we're going to That's use for this box. And uh, they get their choice of lids that they would like to place in the box. And then we move forward from there. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a pretty cool yeah, box. It's everybody pretty, everybody it's can box. use a box. Of course. So I have several different stations I see set up. You got various different tools. And yes. do you all do classes on those as well, like how to use a table saw, a router? Because, you know, I, I messed up last week on my router. <laughs> <laughs> I offer uh, about... Two or three times a year, I'll offer a class on the table saw, and we go into quite a bit of depth on the table saw, and then on the same day, we do the router table. Okay. And we spend half a day on the router table, half a day on the table saw to get up to speed on uh, things that the students who have never used them yeah. can get familiar with them. That's good. So you have a pretty good size space here. What size is the shop? This is inside the store too. It's so. inside the store, the rear part of the store. Yes, this is about uh, 20 by 30, somewhere in that area. Uh, we have a uh, full line of woodwork equipment that the students use. We just have about everything here that mm -hmm. you could, you could want to use to build a project. Right. I know it's a variety of tool lines too, not just one single. Like yes, you got we, Jet, Festool, Rikon. Right, Powermatic. I mean, we got the whole the whole setup. Yeah. So and it gives the students an opportunity to get their hands on this equipment and show them what these machines can do, mm -hmm. what they're capable of, how to be safe around them, stuff like that. That's what we, and especially in the woodworking 101 class. Right. That's what we really get into is safety and what a joiner does, what a planer does, so on and so Just forth. Just yeah, basic stuff. Yes, sir. What's your favorite tool in the shop? Probably the saw stop. The saw stop, you like that one? Yeah, it's a, it's a favorite and, and it's a lot of people's favorite, but I, I really like that uh, industrial saw stop we have over there. So we have workbenches here. We have a variety of hand tools uh, the students can use and, and become familiar with them. And that's what getting started in woodworking is all about, and right. I try to get them started on that journey. Mm -hmm. So other than those classes you teach, are there other instructors that teach There are well? other instructors that we have. A One instructor does a cutting board class. We have another instructor that does pen making. Another guy will do dovetail joints. I recently built a miter station. I bought a Makita to go on it, and I'm kind of back and forth on should I get the Festool. Well, what do you think? I, I own a Festool. We use it here in the shop. Uh, it's a very good machine. I mean, it's a 10 inch that cuts like a 12 inch. I don't see any downsides mm -hmm. to it, but I mean, it is a capital investment. Yeah, I mean, it's an expensive tool, but me personally, 
uh, with some upgrades that I've made to this saw, including the zero clearance plate down here that I, I took off the original factory one, added this, uh, pl uh, this plate from FastCap. I also added these two quarter inch pieces of plywood that are attached with double stick tape to the metal fence. That was another upgrade I made. And then the final upgrade I made was uh, the blade. I, I put a, an 80 tooth fine tooth cutting blade on there and that really does help for a finer cuts. Right. So this is one of the cabinets y'all make This is here. one of the, this is the basic cabinet making class. This is my own design. Basic. Uh, it, it looks it, pretty advanced, doesn't it? Well, it's, <laughs> I call it a basic cabinet making class. It's utilitarian. Right. Uh, it can serve many different purposes. I build it at this height because a lot of people ask me, well, can I set my grinder or mm -hmm. bench top drill press or something like that on here? And yes, you can because it's just at the right height. So they learn how to make the carcass. Mm -hmm. uh, they learn how to make a, a drawer, how, how to fit a drawer in a, in a particular space. It's got a nice lid on it. It's maple plywood. We trim out the lid on three sides. I show them how to make a door. Mm -hmm. This particular one has a shelf inside there for extra storage. Another f cool feature, I show them how to uh, install the Euro type mm -hmm. hinges on, on, the, uh, on the door. So it's, uh, and we use the Craig system to put the this whole holes. thing together. Mm -hmm. Yes, the pocket uh, hole system. That makes it easy. And it does. You know, this is a two day project and uh, it's, been a, it's been a big hit. Yeah, I bet, us. that's nice. Even the door, y'all build the door? We do build the door with the tongue and groove uh, mm -hmm. router bit sets. Oh, yeah? That's yes, awesome. sir. This one is the upper cabinet class and it's basically the same as this. There are a few uh, changes though. One is that inside of this cabinet, there's two shelves that are adjustable. These two I've made adjustable so that they can adjust them anywhere they want. We use the same kind of hinges. We use a different kind of rail and style bit to make, the, make this contour a little bit nicer. Uh, and the really nice part is this top molding. This is a three piece uh, molding that we make on the router table, assemble, uh, glue it together, and then glue it to the cabinet. It's reminiscent of crown, but yeah. it's it's solid wood. It's it's not it's not oh, crown. It is. Yes, it yes. That's so nice. I think that's a pretty that's a pretty. Oh, cool. it adds a lot to it too. It like does. It adds a lot to it. I mean, if you have a, a wood craft in your area and you're looking to get into woodworking, it, I think that would be an excellent way to do it. So, Steve, man, thank you so much hey, for having thanks, us here. Thanks, man. I appreciate you coming. Here. Yes, it's sir. really nice to see you. It's nice to meet you. Wow, meeting a YouTuber <laughs> in person, man, that's great. And let me show you some awesome wood that they have here at Woodcraft, as well as some more tools. They have various size stock here. You get the longer stuff on this side and the shorter and even veneers on this side over here. And a lot of times they'll have this stuff on big sales, 50 and 60% off that you can pick up some of this smaller stock. So there's good deals on this stuff. One of the great things about buying wood here and places like this is it's already surfaced four sides. It's ready to go. You, all you gotta do is cut it to where you want it and then uh, put it on your project. They also have a pretty good selection of live edge wood. This is uh, a, a piece of maple, walnut, purple heart. Look at that piece of purple, <laughs> purple heart. Oh my goodness, that's huge. I've never seen a piece of purple heart that big. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love the sap wood on Purple Heart. Just about any kind of wood. They got stuff for turning. They got bowl blanks. They've got pin blanks. They've got all types of stuff here, like oh, a kid in a candy store. Clamps, every woodworker needs a clamp or three. And this is a huge selection of any kind of clamp you want. Quick clamps, parallel clamps. If you like Festool, they have Festool everything here. A whole section devoted to Festool tools. It's pretty impressive, actually. Anything you want, if you like that Festool Green, place to come right here to get your hands on it. That's what I, what I miss about not having that in Arkansas or anywhere close is I can actually come and put my hands on a tool in the shop and be able to see and feel it and see the size of it. That's really one of the drawbacks of small town living. If you're into pocket holes like me, you can get any type of pocket hole project you want here with Craig. They have a lot of Craig projects actually in uh, tons of selection of pocket hole screws, which Again, in Monticello, we don't have that. I have to order all mine online. So it'd be really nice to be able to just come in and pick up a box of screws if I needed it. In the store, they had all types of hand tools that you could possibly think of for woodworking. They had safety equipment, all kinds of fasteners, wood glue by the gallon or by the bottle, as well as belt sanders, disc sanders, and all that sort of thing. Tons and tons of table saw accessories, squares, hand tools, basically anything you can think of for woodworking is inside this store and it's just, Awesome. You can also walk into Woodcraft and buy table saws, jointers, or bigger tools like that that you really don't want to pay that freight shipping on. 
That's what would be great about having a woodcraft like this in my area. I'm so jealous that I don't have this. They have a very large selection of router bits and also specialty pieces like gauges and knobs and things like that that you normally can't find anywhere else. They also have lots of parts and pieces for your dust collection, your marking, your measuring, and bunches and bunches of finishes like Rubio, Osmo, General Finishes, and Watco, and many more. Hey, this is Brent. He's the assistant manager here at Woodcraft, and uh, he's been kind enough to let us uh, take a little time in his store. What's the... Uh... I guess what's the main difference between Woodcraft and other woodworking type stores, that say, you, in your opinion? I would say uh, product knowledge of our employees. Most, if not all, of our employees are, are woodworkers and you know, mm -hmm. hobbyists at that minimum. So it, they, you know, it helps them have a little interest in it. It's something they enjoy doing in, in, in their spare time. That's I guess I think it makes us different than your, especially your box stores. You know, mm -hmm. you know, if you have questions, that's what we're here for is to answer your questions. And you know, and then with the classes and stuff, we can also just help help, help you expand your woodworking knowledge. So if I come in and I needed, I was wanting to put a hinge on a, on a certain type of cabinet, y'all could tell me what hinge would be best. Yeah, I mean, you know, European style hinges. They're, they're you know they're an enigma to a lot of people because there's so many different variations right. of them. But yeah, I mean, yeah, we we can walk you through that process absolutely. Okay, and tool knowledge. So if I have a question about drill presses or saws and all that stuff you guys could help us out with absolutely that. that's that's kind of where we shine is that being able to talk about the tools and we do demos there every saturday as well oh yeah, um, so yeah they're, they're, those are free that people just show up they're generally yeah. between one and two and uh, just show up and uh, it varies every week anything else you'd like us to know about woodcraft we're, we're a great store come see us <laughs> thank you man uh, appreciate you. you you bet before i compare the other woodworking store i went to in dallas as well as my final thoughts i had to fly all the way back home from dallas texas back to little rock it's only about a 50 minute flight so it wasn't too bad one of the greatest things I took away from visiting Woodcraft was their knowledge of tools that they have. I had bunches of questions and they had bunches of answers. I didn't ask a question that they didn't have an answer for, especially Brent, who gave us the guided tour there of all the tools where we were asking questions. They answered everything. I was kind of back and forth on that Makita miter saw that I had bought, whether I wanted to keep it and, or upgrade to the Capex, and he literally sold me on the saw, not trying to sell me the saw, but just answer my questions. He never once gave me a sales pitch, but he answered every question I had about the Capex, and I've now got one. We also visited another very popular woodworking store while we were there, and while I won't name their name, I was a little, um, I was a little underwhelmed with their tool knowledge. The staff was very welcoming and friendly, but as far as them answering questions on certain tools we asked about, they had no clue about the tool other than there it is, go use it if you want to. That's where Woodcraft really blew me out of the water because every tool we asked about, didn't matter what brand it was, and I asked about Laguna, Rikon, Jet, Festool, and many others, they knew every question I had. It was really a really nice experience and they were more than friendly there, especially from some random guy coming in wanting to make a video. Again, I'm not sponsored by this and I just wanted to go because I've always wanted to go to a woodcraft store, but there's none in my area. If you'd like to see more videos similar to this where I go to a store or a tool company that's making tools in the US, comment below and let me know which one you'd like to see. I'd like to send out a special thanks to Brent, Steve, and the rest of the woodcraft staff there who was more than helpful to me. And a huge thanks to Jeff Allrev, Allrev Morgan for setting this up ahead of time so that I can come make that video with Woodcraft, as well as hosting us for the weekend. We really appreciate it. Click that box right there when I went and visited a hardwood dealer. He told me all there was to know about picking out hardwoods, what to learn, look for, how to select them, everything. It was really good. Clicking the box gets you the big old virtual fist pump. Also another one of my favorite videos right there.